discussion is about. It's what very fruitful. What happening in India? What did you tell them? Could you elaborate a little bit, please? Yeah, we were we were giving them a sense of uh, the type of challenges India is facing. Um, uh, economic challenges, other challenges, the general sort of attack on the demo democratic institutions. So that's what we discussed. Yes. Can you speak a little louder? Welcome to Brussels, and thank you so much for hosting us today. Uh, I had a quick job. Basically, we're on the eve of G20. Most of the European leaders are back in Delhi, and they're going to be meeting with Mr. Modi. They're going to be meeting with the government there. And my question to you is, um, do you feel with all of these... Sorry, can you hear We can hear you. Do you feel with all of these meetings they're going to be having, the Western leaders, are they giving Hindu nationalism a free pass? Are they giving the um, persecution of Muslims and minorities a free pass in India right now? No, I don't, I don't think... Um, I think the G20 is an important conversation. Uh, and it's a good thing that India is hosting it. Of course, there are, there are issues in India that uh, we raise. But I don't think, I, I think the framing that are they giving them a free pass is, is not exactly correct. Um, so do you think that obviously there's a war going on in Europe right now and there's been this constant, uh, um, I wouldn't say an allegation, but there, there is the fact that, that India has closer relations with Russia and we've had European leaders uh, talking to India about it and do you feel in this aspect of trying to lure India away from Russia, they won't bring up the uh, persecution of minorities and Muslims in India, leaders from the West? No, I mean, uh, India, of course, has a relationship uh, with Russia. India has a relationship with the United States. India is a large country, and by nature of being a large country, it will have relationships with many other countries. So uh, that's a normal thing. That's not, you know, India has every right to have a relationship with whoever it wants. Uh, there is, of course, uh, there are serious issues about uh, the type of actions that are being taken uh, with regards to ins with regards to institutions, with regards to democracy and stuff. And yeah, we would hope that uh, there is a sense that there are is there are underlying issues. Can I have a follow up? No, no, please just. Yes, sir. Uh, with Oshkoko National News Agency uh, of Ukraine, we know that the Modi government takes quite a cautious position on the conflict and the war Russia held, uh, Russia held uh, uh, against Ukraine. So that my, I'm curious, what is uh, the opposition point of view on the issue? And uh, the related question, uh, is that cautious position of the Indian government related to the uh, sharp increasing of the oil supply of Russian oil to India. Thank I you. think uh, the opposition, by and large, would agree with India's position, uh, current position on the conflict. Uh, we, have a, we have a relationship with Russia, and I don't think the opposition would have a different view than what the government is currently proposing. I am from actually Kashmir. I would like to ask a, a, a question related to Kashmir issue. And uh, what is what would be your uh, policy if you came into the power next uh, election is hopefully. And uh, uh, recently, four years before, the Article 370 was abrogated, uh, and even opposition leaders were uh, uh, restricted to visit and meet the people. And uh, how you see the future of Kashmir? Thank you. I mean, uh, our position on Article 370 is very clear. Uh, it's in a resolution passed in the CWC of the Congress Party. I would urge you to take a look at that. Um, of course, we are, we are for ensuring that every single person in our country um, has a voice, is allowed to express themselves, and uh, we feel very strongly that uh, Kashmir should develop 
Kashmir should progress and there should be peace in Kashmir. Thank you very much, Vasily.